In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use IntelliMagic Vision to identify performance issues and drill down to proactively identify potential issues in your HP 3PAR environment. The way that the 3PAR volume management works is that you will have SSDs, fiber channel drives, and nearline drives, and within those you will have chunklets that will come from the physical disks, and they will be treated like many disks. Those chunklets are grouped together to form logical disks that are either SSDs, fiber channel or FC drives, or nearline drives, and then the logical disks get grouped together in a CPG for provisioning. From the CPGs, the virtual volumes are addressable to a host and they are either tiered or non-tiered. HP 3PAR's auto-tiering technology is called Adaptive Optimization, or AO. Let's look at the policies in an example with three CPGs, SSD, Fiber Channel, and Nearline. We have a gold AO, which is SSD, Fiber Channel, and has a mode of performance. This instructs AO to promote as much activity to the SSD tier as possible. In the case of the silver AO policy, we have a balanced mode, which instructs AO to distribute the IOs evenly based on the IOPS capabilities of the drives and the space available. The bronze AO is set to cost and is biased towards the near line tier. There is also a capacity warning that influences the way that AO works as well. If the amount of space consumed in a tier exceeds the warning limit, then AO will attempt to move regions from the full tier to any other tier with free space. In the next slide, we will look at HP 3PAR balance charts. These charts show the distribution of the workload across various components. We are interested in knowing how well the workload is being distributed across the back-end disk drives. Ideally, if the AO policies are configured correctly, then both the front-end response time will be excellent and the workload on the back-end tiers will be optimized. In order to determine if the back-end workloads is well balanced, we will examine this balance chart that shows the read I.O. workload across the back-end drives, hence a balance chart. This balance chart shows two different bars, one for the DSS named monetize underscore 2849 underscore zero and one named monetize underscore 2849 underscore five. The green dot represents the average, the area inside the green rectangle represents the 10th and 90th percentile range, and the yellow rectangle represents the minimum and maximum values for the systems. By itself, these are not very interesting, but when you drill down to the individual disk drives, you can easily see the workload distribution on the drives. In the next chart, we will examine the workload distribution on the individual backend drives. As you are looking at this chart, Keep in mind that the workload is distributed across three different drive tiers. An optimized profile would clearly show these drive tiers as three different clusters of workload types, with the SSD flash drive accounting for the fewest number of drives and the highest number of IOs per drive by a significant margin. The second cluster of drives should be the fiber channel drives, which account for the second largest grouping of drives and the second highest number of IOs per drive. Lastly, we would expect to see the cluster of SATA drives accounting for the highest number of drives and the lowest number of IOs per drive. In this chart, we see that something is off. The second largest grouping of drives, with individual IOs per drive in the range of 60 to 180 IOPS per drive. It is also this cluster of drives that has the highest number of IOs per drive. Let's take a look at the type of drive in this group. The identify screen shows the drive name, drive tier, drive capacity, raw capacity, HDD, RPM, and disk drive interface. Note that the drive interface shown for this drive is FC for fiber channel. This means that the fiber channel drives are experiencing the highest average IOs per second. Typically, the SSDs would have the highest average of IOs per second. The other thing to note is that the average IOs for the fiber channel drives are between 100 and 150 IOs per second. This means that the fiber channel drives are running very hot all the time. In just a couple of screens, we were able to visually demonstrate that the AO policies are not distributing this workload in an optimal manner. In the next slide, 
we will take a look at what happens when we tweak the AO policy to limit the fiber channel capacity used by the lower priority AO policy, and also add some adaptive flash cache. Notice that the chart on the right for the day of 6-2 has a fairly tight cluster of drives on the left hand side of the chart with peak IOs per second up near 500. The average for these drives is between 125 and 205. The next span is the fiber channel drives and the range is from 95 to 115 and the last span is the SATA drives. Clearly the changes that were made were good as they moved a significant amount of load to the flash drives and slightly reduced the load on the fiber channel drives. With this level of optimization, you can safely use the storage capacity you have without worrying about impacts to the front end response time. In this case study, Intellimagic Vision was used to identify unexpected imbalances on the back end drives of an HP 3PAR system. Intellimagic Vision uses expert knowledge about systems, configuration, and workload to proactively identify potential risks in the environment. The user interface integrates the logical and physical components to allow for easy drill downs and identification of root cause. If you would like to find out more about Intellimagic Vision for your environment, please email us at info at